one. We're live! <laughs> so, Hello, everyone. Hey, so I would like to introduce you to Sergi, one of my top subscribers. He's in, uh, he's in Russia. So how are oh, you doing, Sergi? Thank you. I'm, I'm doing great. And how are you? I'm all right. Yeah, not too bad. It's a little bit uh, cold today, you... but... Uh, it's, um, it's minus 33 here. Uh, minus 33 Celsius. Is it yes. really? Wow. Yeah. You know, yes, I'd love is. that. I've got this coat that's uh, good to 26,000 feet as I'm climbing Mount Everest. So I'd like to <laughs> test it out in something like that. You know, I'm jealous, man. Uh, let me let me do a short self introduction and uh, yeah, please. Begin. Yeah, we've got a few viewers in already, so yeah, introduce awesome. yourself. Awesome. Uh, so I've been Steven's uh, subscriber for several years now. I've been uh, immensely interested in the laptop topic, just uh, computer topic in general. I've been uh, watching lots of benchmarks of uh, desktop computers, laptops for I don't know seven to year seven to eight years now. Uh, I'm from Russia, and uh, I'm I have my own uh, tech channel on YouTube. Actually, I have two channels. One, some may know me by my cartoon channel, my main channel, and there's uh, also a tech channel. Unfortunately, uh, only those who speak Russian will be able to watch my tech channel. I yeah, we've got I've got it up here actually. Uh, to to Buluga Dragon, it's a tongue twister. Yeah. <laughs> I need at least a few pints to pronounce it. Uh, Table of the Dragon, yeah. The, the character that my uh, profile picture is based on is uh, Cartoon Dragon, yeah. Uh, so basically, yeah, I have a tech channel. I've been helping people to cope with uh, lots of problems with laptops, such as battery degradation, overheating, and so on. And I've been a huge fan of Stevens, and so I'm immensely uh, grateful uh, that he uh, agreed to have this stream with me. Yeah, and uh, you know we want to go through the, the CES things. I've got uh, Andrea from Germany. Hello there, Andrea. Hi. Uh, so uh, what we thought, I know you drew up a, sh a short list. I thought perhaps we can go through. Oh, 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 there is my subscriber here. Yeah, uh, you've got some subscribers in there, I think. Right? So let yes. me put my camera on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's good. So let's have a look. Where should we start? Um, uh, we have a list of uh, topics that we're uh, yeah. Uh, hello, just, everyone. Yeah. Hello, Should we everyone. go through some of the, uh, the the computers that were announced? I've just prepared some uh, Acer slides. So let me uh, to go over to them and show show some Acer slides. I thought yep. Acer was quite decent, actually. Mm -hmm. We'll start off by doing. Um... Oh, actually, oh no, no, I, I'm thinking of Asus because uh, I haven't actually seen the Acer presentation. I think I've seen them all, including Lenovo's, but not Acer's. All right. Well, we'll start off with some. Uh, so the how Nitro are they doing this year? The Nitro Easy. 5 B roll. I think the Nitro 5. Any improvements this year? Because uh, uh, let's be honest, they've been in stagnation during the last few years. Just wow. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm really I think the Nitro 5 it. looks uh, looks a lot better. It's still got like a, a, a game a gamey lid, but it it doesn't look as cheesy as it perhaps did before. It's all plastic still. Mm -hmm. um, it does look better. Is it it kind of? I kind of feel like uh, I'm I'm getting the tough A15 vibes here. <laughs> like yeah, I think the, I like the keyboard deck. There looks looks a lot better, doesn't it? Um, um, looks like it's the same to me. It, it, I don't know. Uh, the keyboard itself was a well. Kind it's of, yeah. All the ones I've had have been all red themed. Um, but uh, all right. So that's yeah, the... they they had RGB keyboards on Nitro Five before. Yeah, they oh, have. The, yeah, the, but I always. Yeah, I'm a cheapskate. The, I buy the cheap model, so. Yeah, the most uh, the budget models had uh, the red keyboard, and like the higher tier models had uh, uh, RGB keyboards. All right, so I'll have to move your picture out the way here because uh, it's hiding, sure. hiding the specs. Uh, so we've got uh, this is the specs here. So we've got uh, it. It goes up to the this is an AMD model or an internal model. It goes up to the 12th Gen i7, or I didn't specify what AMD uh, CPU will be. Of course, it's a 6000 one. Yeah, hopefully um, it can compete with others because I'm really worried for Acer. Like I said, uh, they've been in stagnation during the last few years. Like they barely made any improvements. The Helios 3, uh, 300 was a disaster, honestly. Yeah, I always had issues with their fans, but they've revamped the chassis on that. We'll show you that in a second. And um, interestingly here, if you look at the pricing, the AMD ones are more expensive than Intel. It's just find strange because your CPU is going to perform... Not as well, particularly in gaming, particularly if you've got a 1080p panel. I think uh, the Intel way is, is the way it goes. I think that's strange, is that? Um, 
also what was the fa- way to go this year period in yeah yeah age. i think so also what i yeah. think found is strange right the intel model comes with uh, ddr4 3200 megahertz while the amd one the ddr5 4800 i wonder why the oh. intel model doesn't have ddr5 which, which mm. it can su- support so yeah strange. it supports it but I, i'm guessing maybe because amd needs it more it's AMD has been notorious for requiring uh, faster RAM more than Intel does. Of course, they both take advantage of faster RAM, but like AMD needs it more. Basically, it's uh, due to their architecture. Yeah, t- uh, Ted Source is asking about um, backleading on the uh, Omen 17. It varies by uh, laptop to laptop, even within the same model, doesn't it? But I know ASO uh, always had issues on their... Uh, used to have issues with the Helios 300. It was always terrible backlight bleed. But the last one I checked was okay, so let's look at a draw sometimes. So you can get again a 15.6 inch or 17.3 inch, 144 hertz, all the way up to 165 hertz. Uh, I think that's an improvement. Pricing wise, you know, we're starting at 1049, so I think that's going to be pretty decent if you get like the i5 or the uh, 6600H type of deal. Uh, Europe seems to be getting uh, their laptops before. Us in the US, which is a bit unfair, but uh, <laughs> it always seems to be the case. But uh, all right, so that's the uh, yeah. yeah. The Nitro Five, uh, I guess, looks decent, but uh, we'll have to wait wait for the benchmarks. Did I you, think did it'll you, be all did... right. It depends on. I don't know what power it's a thirty seventy Ti is going to have. You know. Yeah, that, that's that's the whole point because uh, power limits have been plaguing plaguing the. They have, yeah. The the, the, the the Nitro and Helios series in the last two years have been too low because Acer is uh, apparently incapable of improving their cooling systems. Even Asus is doing a better job at that, which I'm surprised about because Asus, Asus, Asus like it's never ca- really cared about cooling. It's more about marketing to them. But here's the honestly. Helios 300, right? And it looks more like the Triton line, which I like. I mean, I complained on the, uh, the last one that uh, was, they stuck with the same design for what, a couple of years and it... You know, got, looked outdated. So this does look a bit better. Looks a bit sharper. Well, the Helios always had those. Uh, not always, like like for three years, it has been having those blue accents, similar to Triton series, I guess. And uh, yeah, this one looks good. Like I said, it all comes down to cooling and how much they actually improved the laptop. Because if they barely made any improvements or only perform only cosmetic ones, it's like. <laughs> well, I think it's got. I think it's got liquid metal on it. Let's have a look at this slide I prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. A lot of these manufacturers are starting to use uh, liquid metal now. You'll notice. Um, yeah, MSI. MSI actually surprised me. They're using not like li- liquid metal itself, but like some special. Uh, oh, it's it's a pad. Yeah, no, it's uh, two. Fa- I think yeah. that's going to be great. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah, so yeah, yeah I'm right here. This has got it's got two fans like before, liquid metal with a foam barrier, which is going to be good. At least it's helped stop it from spreading. Mini LED per key RGB, up to a 3080. Now I did test a 3080 before, but I think it was only it went up to might have been 85 watts. So I'm hoping they're jacking up the power. In fact, one thing we've You'll notice that you probably saw in the MSI presentations, the even the 3080 is getting jacked up from above 165 hertz. 165 hertz plus 45 with dynamic boost. We're talking like 210 watts. So that okay. That sort of <laughs> says to me, were Nvidia just skimping us? You know, last gen they could have done it with the 3080 last time, couldn't they? Increase the power, I guess. <laughs> Uh, I said, uh, Stephen, uh, what do you think about uh, answering a few questions from the chat? I, I think, uh, <laughs> like, uh, first, uh, first off, I want to say hello to my subscriber. Yeah, 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 yep. Hi, away. hello, Shkoda Dierska. <laughs> nice to hear you here. And we've Thank got you. Lalit from uh, India. Mm-hmm. The problem with Helios is that they had 11800H and 11... Yeah. Well, now yes, we're going to have the, the 12th gen. Hello, Andres Lemon. Uh, sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. I'm not good at pronouncing uh, <laughs> English names. English, names in English. Um, what What about, I just returned uh, to HP Omen 17s with QHD. And they're ready. Why? Massive black, black light bleed. Okay. Um, why is this still a big problem? Uh, the... Stephen, would you like to talk about backlight bleed on uh, IPS panels? 
Yeah, we, we, uh, yeah, uh, we just mentioned that before with, with Ted Saucy about the Omen 17. Well, it's caused by the the pressure around the the, the bezel uh, on on the on the screen, you know. So it, it varies. I've I've even had it varying between. Like I, I remember once I got was it Tri- Triton three hundred? Was it? I think it was. I had two. I got two of those. One was really really bad, and I'd sent it back. Got another one, and uh, that was even worse. <laughs> so I ended up giving the one that was bad. Even. Uh, Stephen, in my opinion, in my experience, it has nothing to do with the size of the bezel. Uh, my Dell G3 has a huge bezel. No, no, it's the, the pressure on the bezel, isn't it? If you squeeze squeeze the bezel, oh. you, you'll, you'll start getting the the, the backlight bleed. Yeah, not the size. Yeah, because it's, it's, yeah, it's it's just the nature of IPS panels. So, uh, a lot of you could notice that uh, TM panels never had never really had this problem, but IPS, yeah, lots of IPS screens actually have backlight bleed, and it's uh, uh, luckily it's only noticeable when the screen is like black and or almost black. So, yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, I've I've had them, I've had them really bad, yeah. And uh, you, you know, I think you're in your rights to send it back and uh, exchange it if it's uh, if you notice it. So, uh, don't have a, a B roll for the Triton for uh, the Triton five hundred. I like the Triton five hundred. So I've got a slide though. Yeah, I, I wanted to apologize uh, for everyone if we don't answer all the questions because uh, the time of the stream is limited, unfortunately. But yeah. Well. Yeah, well, we, we, well, of course, we've got a lot to go through as well, of course, haven't we? Yeah, we have a lot to go through. And uh, I wanted to discuss uh, NVIDIA TI versions, Alder Lake, DDR5, and so on. We have a lot of things Yeah, to we've got a lot to go through, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we, I, actually, I do want to do another repaste that uh, Lelit mentioned about using MX5. I'd like to do another repaste Smackdown. I did try uh... one of those pads before. It wasn't a liquid metal pad. It was a graphite pad, um, but uh, it didn't do too great. Yeah, if I can, if I may. Um, Arctic Arctic uh, Thermal Paste, they have... Uh, uh, what they did is just unfair, terrible, and uh, I'd say false marketing also would be fitting here. Uh, what, what, so what they did, they had uh, MX4, which is which was an excellent thermal paste for, all, for many years, actually. Uh, in 2019, though, they uh, released uh, a worse version of it. And, and, and it was still called MX4, and they, of course, didn't say that it, it's worse. And the only reason they they made it worse so so they could release uh, MX5, which was better <laughs> than than their bad MX4 version. Because when I bought MX4 uh, a few years ago and repasted my laptop with it, uh, first the, the temps were not better at all than at stock. Second, it degraded in a, like two three months. The temps started rising. Cleaning the laptop did not help at all. And uh, once I replaced with Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, that one was fantastic. And it's the temps were great. No more, uh, no more frequent spikes, uh, temperature spikes. And after two years, it hasn't degraded at all. Like after two years, uh, if I just if if I keep my fans clean, the temps are pretty much exactly the same they were two years ago. Yeah, that was, that's good. I'm really impressed with it. I'm thermal grease they cry out for high end. Yeah, they cry out good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. I really like good. G-Lid, GC Extreme. Um, no, right, so let's have a quick look at the Triton. Uh, Triton 500's their um, SE is their star of the show, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's very thin. The thickest point is only like twenty millimeters thick or three quarters of an inch. Goes up to a thirty eighty Ti, i nine, sixteen inch. So like like before, sixteen by ten. I know. What's your view, Sergio, on 16 by 10 versus 16 by 9? Which do you prefer? I definitely prefer 16 by 10. I've been a fan of, of this format for many years. Actually, I, for a long time, <laughs> I, I didn't want to switch from um, 4 four by 3, is it? Or 3, three by 4? A 4 by 3. Yeah, basically, it's, basically it's wider. Those, than, those old square kind of displays because I... Have a lot of old TV shows, old games, basically. But I had to switch to 16 by 10. It's in my in my opinion, 16 by 10 is the best of both both worlds. They offer both great vertical space and uh, it's yeah, still a widescreen. I like it. I mean, are you gaming on it? I find it looks a little bit more in your face, marginally. I find it's fine. I mean, I, and I like it for web, you know, browsing the web and working on Excel sheets. You know um, what's great about 16 by 10 in laptops is that uh, usually laptops have 
an absolutely huge bottom bezel. I, I hated it. Some some laptops have like even that ugly hole under. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, like Asus laptops. But 16 by 10 pretty much fixes that. It, it uses that unused space in an effective way. It just makes the screen bigger without making the laptop bigger. That's yeah, just, no, I agree with you. Yeah. I like that. Um, so let's just uh, go back to here. So pricing wise on the, uh, the Triton 500 SE, now, this is coming in March, so that's not too bad. I'm going to try and get this. The 22, $22.99 starting price. That's probably for like a 3070 Ti, I guess, which I think is still decent um, for, for the, the type of machine you're going to get. And, of course, it's got liquid metal again. It's got three fans. Um, you know, Normally, you'd have like, you have got one fan with a fan right next to it. And uh, you've got four heat pipes. That, surprised that it's got six heat pipes at four. Liquid metal yeah. again. Big battery, 99 watt-hour battery. So probably that's... will have upside down motherboard. What do you think? No, I don't. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I, I, I took my Triton will... 300 apart like that, and uh, it was a nightmare. You know, to, I got it back together eventually. I remember. Uh, I think you took it apart like six times before you actually <laughs> fixed it, before you actually made it work. And it's not your fault. It's Acer's fault. Come on. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't work initially. It, I thought I'd bricked it. Inverted my, the motherboard on gaming laptops is just wrong. Crazy, like, man, really, man. That, that's my opinion. That's... Uh, also, one of uh, your Discord um, server subscribers uh, wanted me to mention uh, th the trend for uh, thin and lights and solder DRAM. So let's discuss it for a minute, if you don't mind. Yeah. He he just very much insisted on that. <laughs> uh, basically, the uh, the one I'm talking about is the the one with the uh, cat uh, profile picture, cat with glowing red eyes. I think every I think your server members know who I'm talking about. He um, he despises just like me. He despises that trend uh, for soldered RAM, and uh, making the gaming laptops way too thin, to the point that they have uh, too too loud. Uh, yeah, but yeah, they're loud. That upgradability, and usually most uh, most often they have lower power limits, uh, bad worse performance than thicker thicker models. So I have no idea how Lenovo, by the way, who are making their laptops laptops thinner this year. Are gonna pull that off uh, without making yeah, but them it's, they're not, still not that super. Th well, about twenty millimeters, aren't they? Well, I think um, they've been got bigger fans by all accounts, bigger blades. So I imagine they'll go s rotate a bit s slower. You know, which they say it's quieter as well, and and also there's air being brought through the keyboard, which I'm surprised for the longest time they never did that. Razer had always done that, always done that, you know, and I think that's key. Cool air coming through the keyboard as well. Um, so. We'll see it. We'll we'll test it. They're not using any liquid metal. I think they're using a proprietary one of their own pastes, which is supposed to be quite decent. I don't know, yeah, Legion like, paste. No, nobody knows <laughs> what paste exactly. Uh, the, yeah, the I think I think it's jam. Use. They're using jam. I'm sure. I'm sure it's blueberry. It's blueberry jam. Yeah. So let's have a look. We've got uh, quite a few comments. Uh, how many people speak yeah. English? Oh, no, no. No, they're talking about language in India. India's got fucking loads and loads of languages. <laughs> All right, so let's go. We're talking here now. MSI, let's jump on MSI, because MSI was pretty decent, wasn't it, I think? Oh, uh, The yeah. Raider GE76. Just let me express my opinion about MSI's presentation. It was awesome. Like, so professional, so stylish. I, I think I haven't seen a better laptop presentation ever. Uh, this uh, this really surprised me. I think a Asus, Asus Asus one was good, even though some acting was like, oh, and now we're introducing the the new laptops. Look, <laughs> and MSI did, just did better. Come on. The, yeah, I think the main problem was like, uh, all the voices were out of sync with their mouth. <laughs> I'm, I'm very aware of that these days. But anyway, going back to the GE76 and the GE66, of course, I still love the 15 inch, and I think. Uh, you know, I mean, I like the... The only problem I have with MSI uh, is bad battery life. I don't know what they do with their motherboards, but for some reason, even their uh, yeah. laptops with with le really big batteries, they get bad battery life for whatever reason. I think my main problem with them, and it happened with my uh, GE66 and the Friends uh, model, they the, get huge battery wear, no matter what you do. It, I, I didn't have it on uh, any spe specific uh, battery plan, you know, recharging whatever up to 65% or whatever. He did. And uh, he ended up 
after one month having thirty percent battery wear. Because he would put it, he would put it to sleep, and it would discharge overnight, and he have to recharge it again. And I think, why would, didn't he just uh, keep it plugged in? Well, that's what I did, and I ended up after like might be in three or four months with like thirteen percent. So it was better than is. It's still not ideal. Now I've got a gigabyte X three V seven, and that's some people, uh, just, some I keep people that are just in afraid all, of. Uh, fire. I keep it plugged in all the time, all the freaking time, eight hours a day. We use it for work, and it's got like seven percent battery wear. Good old gigabyte. <laughs> yeah, my Dell uh, has like a twenty percent degradation after two after three years of active use. I keep it at sixty percent charge. So it's degrading pretty slowly, I'd say. I think it's, it's random. Fine. I mean, my gigabytes, uh, I don't know, battery profile, it's 100% all the time, and it's uh, 7%. Uh, oh, right. So, oh, Stephen, cool. uh, what do you think if we um, cross Elder Lake now? Someone was calling me, it was a scammer. Oh, by the way, we do have a telephone number. You see that number on the screen? If you want to call that oh, yes. number... You can uh, oh, okay. dial it, and you will be on the stream. And I want you to ask really hard questions to Sergio, right? Really hard. So, <laughs> bring it on. Out. Bring <laughs> it on. All right. So let's get back to this uh, G seventy six. Keep moving your picture around because it blocks the slide. But um, so this goes all right. GS. No, the GE, the thicker one. Oh, the the the, the main one. gaming yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, although GP, GP, if I'm not mistaken, has exactly the same cooling. So if you if you don't care about battery life or RGB, uh, that's the that's the model you should go for the GP series. Yeah, because I think the GP series is the value series without a doubt. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's uh, probably their best value series. It all it has all those BIOS advantages like advanced BIOS, undervolting, RAM overclocking, you name it. All those features, except but for a larger battery and RGB. We let's also, just compare I, them here. Yeah, so the the GE seventy six. I mean, the key takeaway is, of course, is their dynamic dynamic boost. I want, uh, the thirty eighty Ti one hundred and seventy five watts to uh, plus forty five watts to make it two hundred and twenty watts. So I wonder what the thirty seventy Ti would do. Do you think that? Uh, I think it'll be one hundred twenty five watts plus forty five watts, something like that, to make it. Uh, uh, on, mass, G, no, on, G, on, G, on GE, I'm guessing uh, up to maybe one hundred forty watts. Uh, but if the cooling allows maybe 150, because that's what um, that's what Lenovo is doing with uh, Religion 5 Pro. Uh, by the way, if you don't mind, what do you think uh, we discuss uh, the new TI cards? Because um, no, no, yeah. Do you say TI or Chai? <laughs> they said Thai. Uh, they say Thai, uh, like, don't they? Yeah. Like everyone, but... everyone made fun of them in the chat, and uh, Linus, Linus Tech Tips made made fun of them in the in the tech link. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious, honestly. So someone says yeah, it's not actually 220 watts uh, GPU, 45 watts is for the processor. Well, aren't they supposed to, I mean, Dynamic Boost will move watts from the processor. They'll probably go, I don't know, from the processor to the GPU. But uh, what's the processor these i9s and i7s running at? That 45 watts? You can't rob, rob it all, can they? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, that's what they're saying anyhow. So we'll see. Poof. We'll, we'll see when we get one. Uh, all right, so let's uh, compare the. Uh, so again, we've got the the phase changed liquid metal that pad we talked about. I do like that because it'll you know at room temperature it'll become like a, a solid pad. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking, uh, it's it's probably the best option. It, like if it doesn't dry out, it's it's probably the best option ever. Uh, if it doesn't degrade, if it doesn't dry out, if if you don't have to ever replace it. That's like the best thing ever because uh, there were dry pads before uh, for the CPU, but the the thing is they had worse conduct uh, thermal conductivity than uh, normal thermal base, so it was far from ideal, especially for gaming laptops. And if this uh, like metal liquid metal pad, if it's if it doesn't need to be replaced ever, and and it has great thermal conductivity, it's best yeah, it's gonna be great. Yeah, now someone's yeah, asking. That's, that's uh, Mm -hmm. Will it be a 3080 Ti XG Mobile? I wouldn't be surprised. You know, and uh, I know this is uh, we're looking at MSI, but on the ASUS for the uh, X, uh, the Flow is Z13, isn't it now? Yeah, or even the X13 Flow. I think they'll probably, I don't see why they wouldn't uh, do one. Now, the lid's asking about uh, performance difference between the 3080 and the 30 Ti in laptops. What do you think, Sergi, on that? 
30 Ti? You said 30 Ti. Ti or Chai? Yeah, so I think they're like... <laughs> 3080, oh, 3080 and 3080 Ti. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the difference is going to be between 10 to 15 percent. Of course, it's going to seriously depend on the laptop cooling. But if we're, talk if we're talking about max power limits, like uh, 165 watt 3080 uh, versus uh, 30, uh, 175 3080 Ti, um, the 3080 Ti will have uh, basically 20 percent more CUDA cores. And that would mean probably, like I said, maybe 10 to 15 percent performance boost. So not, not huge, noticeable, but not huge. Well, I worked out um, this slide here. You t I don't know if anybody watch up me, Little uh, Legion. Yeah, basically, uh, basically what I can say from the benchmarks I've seen, I can conclude a uh, 3080 Ti laptop is going to be about on the same level as the desktop 3070. Right. Well, I worked out here. Yeah. Let's, let's get me calculated. Oh, uh, I, I, I was going to ask, where are these benchmarks from exactly? I'll explain that in a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so 149. So about 24%, 25% uh, more. Now, I'll explain where I got these from because I know you think I just uh, got, had a few beers and made them up. Um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first off, NVIDIA said... Okay, the 3070 uh, Ti is going to be up to 70% faster than the 2070 Super. Okay, so that's one thing. This, which is a huge amount. That's a huge amount. Uh, I'm, uh, I have my suspicions that they mean ray tracing and DLSS performance because I seriously doubt in 70% boost. Like, come on. That's I know, kind of right? realistic. Well, kind of they're bound to blow their own horn, aren't they? But... Uh, yeah, I don't believe seventy percent. And then there's this slide here, which I got again. Okay, I got to move you around here. I'm sorry, I keep moving you about. They uh, they, was, they they showed a, a slide showing a thirty eighty Ti versus a twenty seventy Super, and the good old ten eighty. And this this is one hundred and fifty watts. It was basing it all on. <laughs> all right, they're basing it on one hundred and fifty watt, if I remember right. That's one hundred and fifty watt. There, so it was about forty percent faster. There's fifty percent there. I'd say around about forty percent faster than the uh, twenty eighty super. So that's where I got that information from. Gosh, my face looks weird. <laughs> Your face doesn't look weird. <laughs> I mean, I mean, in the in the tiny corner. I think I've lost my slide now. But, uh, Okay, yeah. so so that's where I got that information from. So I tested the GE sixty six with a thirty seventy, one hundred twenty five watts. I compared that against my GE sixty six twenty seventy super. All right, so I got that information there. Um, I also tested the always seventeen X, and that's remember I set that to one hundred fifty watts for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So I got all those numbers together, and that's how that's how I got this information. It's only one game, based and based on what information that uh, they're providing. So, uh, the problem with this test, uh, the only problem with the test I see is that um, I have my doubts. Because I've seen uh, 3070 Ti being based on GA104. Uh, yeah, that's a lower end chip. That's the 3070 chip, desktop 3070, and laptop 3070, and laptop 3080, or 3080M. And the, the thing is, it doesn't have that many CUDA cores, so like, how can possi how can it possibly be that much faster than uh, the laptop thirty eighty? Yeah, I mean, I, I find it quite hard to believe, but you know, like yeah. uh, like Mark says, it depends on Nvidia's drivers and <clears throat> everything else. There's so much up in the air. It depends on the power uh, and whatnot. Is so that, the thirty eighty Ti is an entirely different chip, a G one uh, one hundred three. It is going to be much better than, well, noticeably better than the. Uh, GA uh, 104, 3080 is based on, but yeah. 3070Ti, I have my doubts about it. There are no, still no official specs on the amount of CUDA cores, so we'll just have to see. Just we'll have to see, yeah. Uh, well, so the GE 76 here should be the you know best of the best, really. We're talking four thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars. You think that's too expensive? You know, you're probably going to be getting the the top end is always too expensive. Yeah, like, always. That's a lot. Unreasonable. Yeah, it's a, no, it's completely unreasonable. Come on, it's, it's just the asking premium for their premium models. They're 
because as, look, look there, it's like they're saying this is our top end and we're expecting top money from it. So. In fact, so we will put up, I'll put up the slide for the GP 76 and 66 here. As you see, the pricing is so much more competitive, of course. I think, uh, yeah, you're looking like $2,399 for the i7, $3070. But I think that the, the, the 3080 Ti one with uh, the i9, 30 gigabytes of RAM for $3,099, because that's, that's good, isn't it? You know, compared to paying 4100 on the GE version. And you should have decent cooling. Now, will this have sure. the, the same thermal pad? Uh, I don't think there's mention of it, I is think, there? I think, I think they said it's going to be optional. So, uh, first, it's going to depend on the model. Uh, second, uh, I think maybe some people would be able to choose whether they want that thermal pad or not. Honestly, no idea at this point. No idea. I'll we'll just have to see again, uh, just maybe in a month for his benchmarks. Hopefully, you'll be able to get some further view. And, yeah, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll do, yeah. Now, we'll Mohammed's asking, uh, why, why is Asus uh, limiting the 3080 Ti to 165 watts in the Zephyrus Duo 16? Well, it's thin. It's quite a thin machine, isn't it, I think? It has a <laughs> really good cooling for considering its thickness due to its unique cooling design. But, of course, it still has its limitations, so... Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I really like that. We'll go over that one in a second there. Um, but I think the, 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 the Vector, they changed the name, haven't they, from uh, the Leopard to Vector. I don't know why. Vector. They, they tr keep, keep changing names. <laughs> I, I really hate their uh, Katana and Sword lineups uh, because uh, they are just so overpriced considering what they give. Like, have you seen the... Yeah, the I've seen them. Yeah, yeah, I saw them. And I... Uh, like that's why, just why, why, why do they cost as much as a Legion Five, and yet they offer like? I didn't like the cross. Was it the crosshair one that was the Rainbow Six Siege Extraction theme, yellow? I didn't like the look at that one either, really. Um, I don't know. Let's have a look at the GS seventy-seven. GS seventy-seven. Okay. Uh, GS. Uh, GS sixty. Yeah. Yeah, 66, I believe, uh, was their first and only GS, which didn't have an uh, upside-down motherboard, which I really res respected MSI for. But then they, I believe they returned to that trend. So. I hope not. I mean, I, it's, I don't, see, don't see what the benefit is. Um, but again, these are going to be Max-Q. Aren't they going to be Max-Q GPUs in the uh, GS series? Well, definitely lower power limits. Yeah, I think so. Q. So we're not going to get, uh, you know, tech chap uh, said it was great, but I don't like the I don't like the central hinge on the seventeen inch. Um, oh yeah, the notorious MSI. The MSI have been notorious for bad hinges. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I think uh, I saw when tech chap opened it up, it wobbled like crazy. So I don't think that's particularly great. And yeah, it's expensive, four thousand two hundred, four thousand two hundred dollars for the thirty eighty Ti. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of lot of change, isn't it? Yeah, the i9. Uh, of course, they're gonna pack 380 Ti's only with i9s, probably because okay, because 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 marketing, because reasons, yeah, because i7 is like gonna be barely any any slower, barely. It's just gonna be unnoticeable. Yeah. i7 uh, 11 700 H will probably be, be an excellent value CPU, honestly. Still 14 cores, still uh, all those I think the 12, uh, the 12700H, yeah, I think that's the one to go. That's the one I would get. Yeah, yeah, it's a 12700H, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the one, one I would get. Would. Yeah, definitely. I wouldn't bother with the i9. I don't see the point of it. What is it? An extra, what, 300 megahertz boost or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the G8 66. Now, I always felt it was a little bit flimsy, this. I, I mean, I looked at the when it first came out, this, this model, and uh, it's very thin gauge uh, metal. I don't know whether they've increased that to make it a bit more sturdy, but hopefully they have done. But it's still expensive. The base is sixteen hundred dollars. That's probably what with thirty sixty. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, almost for so sure. Quite a lot in it, you know. But I know you'll get a faster CPU. Yeah. Uh, speaking of overpriced stuff, 
uh, the, the new Alienware will begin from uh, the the 14-inch Alien, Alienware. Yeah, that's... Uh, $1,600 for 3050 Ti. Like, what the actual heck? Yeah, I looked at that and I thought, what's the point of that? Yes, we if we have uh, if we have Zephyrus G14 with 3060 for the same price, like why would you go for 3050, which is so much worse, so much worse. It's terrible. Yeah, I've got uh... 3050 is terrible. <laughs> Four gigabytes. It. That's it here, isn't it? They say it's the thinnest. Okay, yeah, it's 14.5 millimeter, but it weighs about four pounds, right? So it's not exactly the lightest. The Razer 14 still lighter. Um. It goes up to 3060, but the Razer goes up to 3080 Ti, doesn't it? Uh, and it's, in fact, we'll have a look at... Uh... Um, 3080 Ti. Oh, it's going to be either Furnace or we're going to It'd be a lower-powered uh, model, but, yeah, let's uh, check out Razer then. Eh? Yeah, we... or or lower clock speeds. I believe the clock speeds would be, like, below 1, one gigahertz because, come on, the 7,400 cores uh, in a thin and light form factor. Like, what were they thinking? That's so good. Yeah, the Razer Blade 14, yeah, 3060 started at uh, $2,000. So it's still like it's actually cheap, 144 hertz display. Uh, 3070 Ti with a QHD, 2600. And the uh, 3080 Ti QHD, three and a half grand. 165 hertz refresh rate. So, and it weighs. I look at the specs. It's it's less. It's under four pounds. So it weighs less than the um, there you are three point nine two pounds. So it weighs less than that Alienware one, and it's got higher specs. Uh, I think Alienware just blowing their own horn. What does everybody else think? Let's see if we've got any questions on that. I believe we have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Alienware yeah. eGPU. Now. Did they, did, actually, do they have another eGPU? I mean, I've still got the Alienware AMP, and I was thinking that they don't have the AMP port now on these things, do they? eGPU. Do they have a? Do they you, have an, a, another one? Another perhaps? What do you mean by eGPU, though? External GPU, like they had the AMP with your proprietary uh, AMP the, connector. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and you got uh, really, you got uh, a ASUS know. with their uh, yeah, it's their little one. The problem with uh, with the bigger with the bigger boxes, you know, bigger GPUs, yeah, is that they um, uh, is that they have that huge limitation of Thunderbolt, yeah. Uh, and while the Asus one uh, doesn't have this problem, but it has another problem: lack of upgradability. So you cannot just buy your own desktop GPU and put inside there. You have to buy a proprietary one from Asus, which is, which is going to Cost you a lot of money, of course. Yeah, we need and, uh, more bandwidth, I think, with a Thunderbolt, don't we? I mean, that's and that's... yeah, and the pro another problem with that uh, proprietary Asus, Asus GPU is that it uses a mobile chip, a cut down mobile chip, not the not the full desktop thirty eighty. So, so it's like, like, is, is there much point in that? Yeah, I mean, people, I, I must admit, people... I've got, I've tried them all. I had the Aorus gaming box, I had an external eGPU, uh, which when at first the the the, the twenty and then when the 3080 came out first, it wasn't it wasn't even supported on the AMP initially. You know, it takes a while for some of them to get supported, like on the AMP. And um, you mean the uh, graphics amplifier amplifier from Alienware? Yeah, yeah, the graphics amplifier. And that was the best one. I mean, the Thunderbolt three sometimes yeah. it was hit and miss. We could have get it to work straight away. It was always a bit of a nightmare. The AMP was a bit better for that. You know and what the... I what I like the most? I like the most the MSI version they had uh, like five years ago, where you have like a, that giant. <laughs> box uh which you could put a desktop gpu in your own gpu you just uh, put your laptop over it and uh you have all those uh, ports in there the box of of course also charges the laptop uh so basically the idea you bring your uh, thin and light ult ultrabook uh from work from wherever yeah you you connect it to that dock with a desktop gpu by the way which has much better um bandwidth than thunderbolt does so yeah. you don't have the thunderbolt well, that sounds good doesn't it yeah. yes it was it was excellent and people hated it people hated it just because uh because uh, the laptop is like higher it's above above the table so you cannot use the laptop screen 
even though it's just 14 inch. Like, in my opinion, if you're using a giant external box, you can also use an external monitor. Like, what's the problem with that? Uh, no, I don't see any problem with it. Now, uh, Mark was mentioning uh, about uh, water cooling for these notebooks. Now, it's interesting uh, that you brought that up because, of course, XMG announced uh, water cooling, didn't they, in theirs? In their Neo 15. It's like a little box which you can carry around in your backpack. Don't even remember seeing that. It brings the temperatures down by about 20 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's an interesting thing. I mean, I, I don't think you need it, really, do you, to be honest? But I thought that was quite interesting. What does everybody think? Do we need water water cooling for laptops? Um, we will if uh, NVIDIA and AMD keeps increasing the TGP of their desktop GPUs. Uh, and if they don't cut down on power of the laptop GPUs, of course, which, which they will, definitely will. <laughs> So. Yeah, well, perhaps. Yeah. I've got the, other, the Razer Blade 15 line up here. Of course, they kept the chassis pretty much the same, I think, which is a bit disappointing, isn't it? I don't think they've changed that, but it's nice. I mean, why change uh, a good Pride, thing? Yeah, I like the question from Pridex uh, user. Pro, sorry, Prodex. Prodex. Uh, sorry. Uh, the question is, is 6 gigabytes of VRAM enough uh, for 2022 Ultra Gaming? For like 90% right now, it's perfectly fine. But if you really want high longevity, if you want to game uh, AAA titles three to five years from now, I highly recommend for to, to go at least to, for uh, an eight gigabyte GPU. Because uh, six gigs are already showing their limitation right now in games like uh, Watch Dogs Legion and Control. There's only gonna be more of such games in the future, more and more. So six gigs, good now. Not great longevity. That's that's what I want to say. What what do you think, Steve? And what was the sorry? Was was looking at this uh, electronics? What was the subject again? Uh, the, the question is is uh, six gigs. Gig oh, six gigs. Yeah, the memory. Enough. Yeah, well, I yeah. think uh, six gig, six gigs is going to be a problem. On it. It's probably okay on the 1080p panels, not so bad. But yeah, look, look, we're now faced with a lot of QHD panels, aren't we? So I think it's going to be limiting. I think uh, eight gigs is way. You want to be at the minimum. Yeah, uh, so. increasing resolution actually does not increase the um, the VRAM as much as people think. Maybe like by like ten percent, fifteen percent, but not not like one and a half times, not two times more VRAM. No, uh, definitely they definitely require more VRAM. It does require more, sure. As you increase the resolution, but not like not like by a huge amount, by a huge percent percentage. So, but uh, I imagine ray tracing and all that would end up increasing the VRAM. So. I think we're yeah, more. Uh, we, you know, it depends what you play, isn't it? I mean, if you're an esports it, player, yeah, you're, you're yeah, playing yeah. Fortnite or whatnot. You're playing at 1080p yeah, well, like, low settings, like, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. But uh, Fortnite and uh, at 1440p is going to require much less VRAM than uh, Watch Dogs Legion at uh, 1080p. So it uh, more depends on a game than on resolution, honestly. Yeah, but I, I might. Yeah, esports players are going to be playing at low low quality settings, uh, 1080p, aren't they? You know, you're not going to. Max yeah. it out. Perhaps I should try that. That's why I lose all the time. Um, I, was, I was just looking at the... Uh, uh, I was asked the question about uh, the XMG 38, uh, 3080 Ti, how much it's going to cost. But I was wondering about then about electronics. What they're launching. I haven't had a chance to look at electronics yet. Because that would give us a guideline on what uh, prices it would be. I'll have to, we'll have to look at that, won't we? Um all right, so we, uh, what do you want to talk about now? We're looking... Yeah, we can answer some uh, questions or we could continue on the topic. We could discuss Alder Lake, which I'm uh, very excited about. Yeah, we can, at... can do. I mean, they were yeah. Totally, yeah, we, we looked at the Razer prices. They're, you know, they're, they're expensive as usual. 3000 for a 3070 30, Ti. So they're in the upper echelons of pricing. I'm going uh, to answer one more question, question if you don't mind. Um... Will a 3080 Ti laptop be 3070 desktop? Uh, face with T Fortnite user is asking. Uh, I think they're going to be about on par with each other. Of course, it's going to seriously depend on power limits. But for if, if we're talking max, uh, 175 watt 3080 Ti laptop, it's going to be probably just a little faster than uh, desktop 3070. 
but don't expect much improvement over Jessa 370. I think it'll be a bit faster here. Yeah. I do. Not by much, though. Yeah, but uh, of course, it's all about power limits and. Uh... Yeah. Um, how, how many years it? will Lenovo Legion Five Pro twenty twenty one model be fair enough to play game? I mean, long time. I mean, this is the problem that. You know, we'll all jump on this on the bandwagon of new stuff. You know, we go, oh my god, yeah, could they get an extra two FPS? But I still using a twenty eighty Max Q and my Omen fifteen, and uh, that's that still games very well, as good as good as a thirty sixty, about ninety watt, ninety five watt, thirty sixty type of thing. So thirty eighty Max Q is, I guess, no, I guess it's decent. Yeah, no, me twenty eighty Max Q still games well. Um, so 30, I think to twenty eighty Super Max Q is. Was awesome. Yeah, for, yeah, you uh, know uh, what, what I what I mean is in terms of energy efficiency, because uh, at like one hundred and five watt, uh, twenty eighty Super Max Q, the Super version, not the the normal Max Q, the Super Max Q uh, was so efficient. I think it was uh, almost on the desktop twenty seventy level, for like half the power consumption. Yeah, yeah. I think it's. I think the Mac Q was great. Um, so wants to talk. Uh, wants to talk us uh, talk about the Asus. In fact, what I should do on the Asus. Asus. Have you tried their Citadel thing? Yeah, the the, the new um, the Flow Z13, which I really do like. Uh, that's like startup Steam, I guess. Steam. Have you tried their Citadel? Are you asking me. Yeah. No, I. Uh... <laughs> Tend not to play modern games that much. Sorry. No, it's it's not a game. Well, it's it's a game with some games within a game. But uh, I gotta find it oh. here. I downloaded. I did load it up. Like the latest game I've been playing lately is No Man's Sky. So, <laughs> but I do want to. But that's mostly because I've, I have a 1050 GPU, which I'm looking forward to upgrading to uh, 2070 Ti if I'm lucky. This year, because uh, I've been very much looking forward to Alter Lake CPUs. I I love the idea of uh, crazy multi-core performance and great battery life on the go for basic tasks, of course. It's not going to be like uh, super high performing on battery, no. But it would have a great battery life on uh, for idle, for watching movies, uh, office applications, and so on. While plugged in, we'll have a crazy high performance, faster than desktop 11th gen. Yeah, well, I I I did review the uh, X the Flow X thirteen, and I did really like it. And I did try. I'm sure I'd also try the 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 XG Mobile thing. And I I did. You know what I was saying with it with the connection. Was it PCI Express connection that you wouldn't lose any frame rates? Well, I I did. I didn't find it was that great. Um, but it, you know, just, I I do like a small machine, like a thirteen inch. But I don't really want to game on that because my eyes are pretty poor. You know. It's, it, You've got to put it to an external monitor. So that's why I do see that uh, external device uh, being good. Um, yes, external monitors are definitely recommended. I recommend them to everyone yeah. uh, who uh, who uses their, their laptops mostly at home. Of course, if you travel like all the time and you cannot carry your monitor with you, of course, this is not an option. But if you like spend your time, like 90% of the time at home, and just carry your laptops uh, to work sometimes or to some other places. I definitely recommend getting a external monitor for uh, so it wouldn't hurt, so you wouldn't hurt your eyes because uh, you know, the eyesight would get poor. It's it's hard on a small machine, but it's uh, time. It's good for you know if you want to travel. Okay, so um, it's Asus presentation or? Well, this is the uh, the Citadel. You can go in here and talk to this annoying robot for a while. And oh, then, no. <laughs> then, you, then you find. Yeah, you walk around and you're clicking on various laptops, and it was last year's laptops. I thought, what the heck? What's going on? So you have to go to the gallery, and then, uh, so this is the the Z. Of course, what I like about it, I mean, I I love two and ones or you know pen supported machines. So this is a pen supported machine, um, the detachable keyboard. So it's a bit like the yeah. Surface on steroids, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I like the concept, but I don't like the GPU. I'm like 3050 Ti hater, the mobile version that is, which only has four gigs of VRAM. The desktop version is decent with eight gigs. I think uh, for the form factor, I think it's quite amazing. I think it's a uh, 65. Is it 60? What, what's the power of it? You think is it 65, 85 watts? Don't remember. 
65 watts probably. Mm, no idea. With that, with that uh, construction, I, I'd say, with that it's... cooling design, they they can achieve a decent cooling. It might as yeah, well be 60 it... watts, 50, 60 watts on the GPU. It's I still wish it stuff. had 30, 60 max Q instead because that VRAM, come on, 4 gigs. But, but you've got the XG Mobile, which you can... That... That's the whole point of it, isn't it? If you want to do some really hardcore gaming on an external monitor, you plug in the XG Mobile. And I, the big question is to me is, should you get the X13 or the Z13? Yeah, I and mean, if they keep upgrading the um, external to... enclosures, and if they, if they keep the port itself, the connector itself the same, yeah, it's, it's a pretty good option if you, if you could upgrade several years from now to another GPU that would be pretty great, in my opinion. It would be yeah. awesome. Serasa so says it's 35 to 50 watts, so it's pretty poor, yeah. But I guess I say, it's it's a tablet. I think if you that wanted explains. to go for, didn't want a tablet, you go for this X13, and that's probably a little bit more power. Here's a like, little tablet form factor, which is like the Surface, and uh, it's quite interesting. So I'm going to see if I can get, get one. I do quite like these type of things, so let me uh, go. Yeah, we're waiting for all sorts of reviews from you, Stephen, this year. <laughs> Well, well, we'll see. Hopefully, I can get a few of these things. Um, yeah, the Z13 looks a bit. It does look bit good. I like it. Uh, all right. So here, this is my. This is actually my favorite one. The uh, Duo 16 or 16 Duo, whatever you call it these days. Will cost a fortune, though. <laughs> I know, right? But you got a dream. <laughs> <Don't you? laughs> now, yeah, the I dream of Vision 5 Pro. The surprising thing is, though, why no Intel? Uh, on the Zephyr. Pretty much ditched Intel at this point. Not completely, but mostly. Thinking. Well, you still get on the Tough and a few other lines that you get at the Scar. Um, but the Zephyrus line seems to be AMD only, which is. Which last year we would all be going, yeah, great, great. But now we know that the Intel 12th gen is going to kick its ass. It's going to. It's gonna, yeah. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> you know, why pay, like. Why sell a kidney, get this, and get lower performance? But that, that being said, it's a, it's a freaking great machine, isn't it? Would you like to discuss uh, Ryzen 6000? Because I, I think we didn't discuss it. Just yeah, well, we did. Do we know any? It's not. It, it's a, a, a boost. There's a boost from the previous gen. What? By what? Like, what's a boost? By yeah. 300 megahertz fast or something like that? Yeah, for some reason, they. Uh, even though they showed impressive benchmarks on the U series chips, like up to 28%, up to 30%, I believe, performance boost. Wow, that's impressive. That's really impressive without sarcasm. But they didn't show a single benchmark of the H series. And neither did Intel, by the way, which, uh, con considering the leaks, the leaks, considering the desktop 12th gen release, we know that uh, the laptop 12th gen Intel will be good, the H series. But there are like no leaks, no leaks of uh, AMD six thousand. Like, why? W where are they? Like, are they coming up? Yeah, I don't know. I think looking oh, at the lead times, uh, they're coming out after the Intel ones, aren't they? So they might still be working to finish them up. I mean, uh, Intel was starting to see them around February, March, while AMD is more like April, May time. Isn't it? So we'll see. They might not have finalized everything yet. Um, so, yeah, so, so yeah, well, I did like this, uh, the, the Duo 15. What do you think of the secondary screen? Is that much use? I mean, this time it's more seamless. It merges it's, in with the main screen. It's going to be, I think, uh, I always loved that idea, and I think it's going to be extremely useful for, for people who do a lot of multitasking. Like my, uh, both of my cousins are programmers and they always use external screens when they can. And that would benefit them a lot. But again, that laptop costs, laptops cost so much that, <laughs> so. but if yeah, you buy, exactly. buy the base version, I guess it's not going to cost a fortune. It's just going to be overpriced for gaming performance. But for people who, who need, really need that multi, multi, multitasking on the go, uh, if they cannot connect an external screen, I, I it's think still going to be, be pretty good. Easy. And they, and, and and gamers in IT Paradise says that they are now overclockable. What is overclockable? The 6800HX. Uh, Stephen, you need to address the elephant in the room, the overclockability and voltage control on Ryzen Mobile. Because um, none of the laptops that came out with the uh, 5900HX last year were overclockable, even though uh, AMD claimed otherwise. 
like zero laptops with, which supported overclocking in that CPU. Well, hopefully they will do. I mean, is, is Ryzen Master supported on these mobiles now? With no, next gen? no, no. I don't believe that. I stopped believing AMD's lies about <laughs> the voltage control and overclocking years ago. Like uh, people had kept hoping, okay, maybe they'll enable undervolting. Maybe they will. Maybe maybe this gen they will. They never do. They don't care about the laptop enthusiasts. Uh, and uh, their 15900 HX last year was just an attempt to make it look like they care about enthusiasts, even though they don't. Because if they did, they would unlock the voltage. They would unlock multiplayer on laptops, which actually support it. Because they, let's face it, the Intel versions with HK CPUs, the i9 HK, almost all of them support overclocking via either via uh, BIOS or Intel XTU, while AMD does not. Not like none of the laptops that really were released last year with HX supported overclocking. So, well, so I, I find hopefully they will. You, you remember, we got Frank Azor there now. He's uh, he'd be pushing for this type of stuff. Yeah, we'll see. But I uh, let me just remain skeptical about this. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can show me an overclockable AMD CPU, I'll be just happy to be wrong. But I won't. We, we can we can hope. So <laughs> the Strix G, the Strix line. Again, the Strix is uh, AMD. The Scars, that's the uh, the Intel version. I, I assume they wanted to differentiate the two because they were quite similar, weren't they? The Strix and the Scar. Uh, it was quite easy yeah. to get them mixed up. I mean, there isn't much design change from the outside, at least. Uh, even yeah, they, it looks pretty much the same. Yeah, they said they raised the power limit up to 150, 150 watts. Yeah. Uh, according to their presentation, at least on the yeah. ROM series, yeah. So that's uh, I guess, but that's pretty good. What I find unimpressive though is that uh, they use liquid metal and they still have lower power limits than uh, Legion Seven, which has thermal paste. So yeah, and no, I did ask them about you know the G the advantage. One, well, you know, had all kinds of issues on the G15 advantage, uh, liquid metal leaking out and frying motherboards. I did ask them, will that happen again? And uh, what steps are taken? Now, they didn't, they didn't answer the question that, that about what steps are taken to stop it happening, but he'd said, he'd said that you know, there shouldn't be any more problems. But I also asked him about RAM because remember last time we were having issues with RAM affecting performance mainly on Ryzen machines. You know, with a single rank by eight or single rank by sixteen, he said that uh, that issue should be going away now. You know, probably because of the, the, the DDR5 faster RAM. What do you think? Mm. Do you think we'll see that issue again? Uh, I, I think I, I'm definitely I'm sure we'll see that because at first because um, the higher the higher frequency you go for, uh, the worse the timings become. Uh, second, because uh, all this pandemic uh, situation causes a uh, massive chip shortage, uh, which will eventually uh, lead to uh, some of the RAM modules being slower than the others. That's pretty much inevitable. That's well, what, you what, was, what, was the the what was the true cause of it before? Was it like the memory controller on the CPU? Mm, I don't know the reasons, honestly. You know, and yeah. I don't think that's the new, these new CPUs were extra to bring to the table, you know, an extra 300 megahertz boost or something like that. And then you could, other than that, you've got USB 4. You got uh, DDR5 support. Have they changed anything else? Is the cache the same, or is it L3 cache has that gone up a bit? I mean, it was always quite decent anyhow, wasn't it? But, no expert on RAM, honestly. I'm not so yeah, I'm not sure either. But that'd be interesting if that uh, if the RAM still has an issue. Now, one thing I did like, Asus did put MUX switches in. Finally. Yes. That's yes. Huge. And webcams. And webcams. And webcams. <laughs> yeah, finally they've. Uh, People were saying, oh, they cannot put webcam there because that would make the bezel, the top bezel bigger. Come on, it's still yeah, small. Yeah, bollocks. We know it was a uh, complete still horseshit. Still small. Still small and they had managed to put the webcam in. Come on. They're it, just uh, full, of, full of crap there. But yeah, so they could have done all that. The mug switch is great. So I think Asus is probably a good way to go now. I think, they're, like last year, last year in CES, we said, oh, Asus is great. Oh, they were the best. And then what happened was they had the RAM situation. We had no mugs. That the so the increase in power on the GPUs didn't make any difference because of the lack of a MOX and the slower RAM. So in the end, they were a bit of a, bit of a wet squid. Now 
with those things addressed, I think uh, they could be a force to be reckoned with because they have been quite uh, in- innovative. <laughs> Say that when you've had a few beers. I'd like the... be less optimistic, uh, honestly, because uh, have you seen the ASUS Tough presentation? Tough A15? I've seen oh, it. Sorry. I thought that looked good. I thought that looked better. Yeah, the thing, if you pay attention to, paid attention to uh, heat pipe design, uh, it pretty much remained the same this generation. I, th I see that as a problem, especially given that they uh, announced 140 watt 3070. That's crazy high for for tough laptop. Well, hopefully they've uh, changed the fan profiles, so increase the fan speed, something like that. To... Make it like, make it sound like a jet. Yeah. <laughs> well, they've got liquid metal in those. They've got liquid metal in the mall, haven't they? Now, huh? I think. Yeah, uh, even they're the tough. Doing... Yeah, they're definitely improving their laptops. It's just uh, the thing is, in my opinion, not enough. Like, if you look at MSI, if you look at Lenovo, they're doing their best with cooling. While uh, Asus tries to save money, cut corners everywhere they can, especially when it comes to cooling. But they do their best with their marketing. So their marketing, their design is, is great. But the cooling is what they seriously need to work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, wrong screen. So now we got the scar. Which one? Which, which, I have to get me notes. Which which Asus model had the uh, the mux like panel, the one where you could switch between 4K 120 hertz and uh, full HD 360 hertz? Was that the scar? Was it? Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, that why I'm, I I don't know how how that would work. Like, how do you? make the pixels look not um, blurred when you decrease the resolution from the, from yeah. the maximum. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how that, uh, that that works, but, you know, I can't remember if it was the scar, but it looked pretty interesting. Of course, you have to, there's another thing you've got to reboot if you want to do that. I think, me personally, I think that's still quite fancy to stay uh, a QHD 240 hertz. That'll be good enough for me. I, I've got no need for 4K. So yeah. this, this, the, the SCAR line goes, is the Intel 3080 Ti. What was the power on the SCAR? Was that 265 watts? Uh, I think it was up to 150 with Dynamic Boost last year. So SCAR cooling was unimpressive compared to Legion's. Uh, maybe, maybe even 140. I, I, I could be wrong here. But definitely wasn't up to 165. I'd remember that. Uh, the only 165 laptops were from MSI, Alienware, and uh, Lenovo Legion 7, of course. All right, okay. That's it. Yeah. Asus power limits were lower. They've still got this uh, key thing here. You know, I've never understood the point of that. Was keystone. That the keystone. Uh, it's Saving your a... settings or something, was it? I... It can be... Uh, Useful in some extremely niche situations, I'm guessing, to hide your files, uh, like like uh, Jared said, uh, stuff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. because uh, it unlocks the hidden special folder on your uh, hard drive, or in this case SSD. Uh, so it can be useful in some situations. Like uh, you know, what can be useful for uh, Stephen. I, I I'm just thinking. I just. Uh, I just realized what it's useful for. When you take it to work, like your laptop to work, yeah, you don't want anyone to see your private files. Uh, so you just take it out for work, and when you come home, you just plug it in, and you have all your personal files. So nobody would be able to access your personal files when you're at work. For example, if you leave your laptop in the office, anyone can just start using your laptop, and you you would not be worried for your files yeah. and your settings. So. That'd be useful, yeah. Yeah, Perhaps similarly, the, uh, that swappable uh, refresh rate on the screen and resolution was the, 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 the Zephyr's duo. So. so that was that one there. So we've covered pretty much Asus. I think I saw we've got the G14. Hmm. That was quite We didn't cover one. Lenovo. Lenovo, <laughs> everyone loves the last two years. Yeah, Lenovo was the, uh, the hot topic last year. The, the G14... I quite like this one. Uh, the past, uh, the past two generations. Again, uh, the uh, E Matrix the, display on the back, and they never I really see much point for that, really, unless you're a presentation or something. Yeah, this year they seriously improved uh, the G14. Not only they improved cooling with the uh, vapor chamber, they also put the um, AMD GPU there. They improved six nanometer GPU. 
AMD GPU. So not not the last year's mm. GPU, which is uh, which is uh, commendable. And of course the, that webcam and 16 by 10 display. Look at 16 by 10. Yes. Yeah. Not 16 by 9 anymore. So that's that's th those are some big upgrades. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I agree. And uh, yeah, it always had great battery life, good speakers. Yep. I think it's gonna be a nice one, yeah. No, I'm I'm starting to really respect that laptop because uh, to me it seemed always seemed like a compromise, but with good cooling, with webcam, with 16 by 10 display, it's it's gonna be really good. Yeah, well, we just got only the one M.2 slot again, which I thought was a bit of a shame. Well, size limitations, of course. Ah, I still think you put put two in there. Uh, get me a webcam. Going. Possible, I guess, yeah. <laughs> so let's see what questions we've got. What do you think about jumping from 1660 Ti laptop to a 3080 30, Ti or 3080 Max P? Well, that's going to be a big jump, isn't it? <laughs> 1660 Ti to 3080? Yeah. Uh, well, what's the, what's oh, the power of 3080? 3080 Ti, even. You know. Oh, yeah. It's going to be big no matter the power limits. Of course, it's going to be, uh, the performance is going to depend on power limits. But the the jump in performance will definitely be big, even if it's like 3080 Ti. Max. I mean, again, the, the question is, you know, what you're going to game at 1080p or QHD or 4K or whatever, or if you're going to do more ray tracing. Yeah, obviously. I mean, the ray with, tracing you're going to need the 3080 Ti, aren't you? So. Yeah, yeah. If you go high resolution, the all that uh, GPU memory, uh, I think it's going to have up to 16 gigabytes of uh, GDDR6. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah so uh, for high. For high resolutions, it's definitely going to be a huge boost, even if even if it's like Max Q. But if it's not Max Q, it's going to be like very big, maybe maybe twice the performance as sixteen sixty Ti. I don't know. I don't know. It's, hey, we've got uh, we've got Andrew Morrison. Hi, Andrew. How are you, how are you doing? In fact, you should call in on the t on the cell cell phone. He's actually an airline pilot. He was flying around, and he's his situation. Yeah, so He's got a desktop with a, um, a fifty six hundred and a thirty eighty Ti, and with him flying around all the time, he's. <clears throat> wow. He's he's wanting to get something portable, so he's thinking a 17-inch machine, and he keeps going backwards and forwards between different models and things. Uh, but he doesn't want he hates 16 by 10. <laughs> well, well, we knew like 16 by 10. Well, he likes 69, but fast. It's a matter of preference. It's a matter of personal preference. We cannot say like for sure. Oh, this this uh, type of form, display format is is better than the other because they both have have their pro, pros and cons. Like purely for gaming. Because games are optimized for 16 by 9, purely for gaming, usually uh, 16 by 9 is preferable. For most other tasks, I'd say 16 by 10. All sorts of, all sorts of work, all sorts, sorts of uh, like working with text documents where you have to scroll down, all that. How I, about I, resolution? So QHD versus Full HD? Because the QHD now is up to 240 hertz, isn't it? Well, the, uh, the, we're pretty much maxed out on uh, 360 hertz and the Full HD. On a I laptop, will it make any difference? On a laptop, I, I'd still prefer uh, Full HD because, uh, first, because the pixel density is going to be small uh, anyway on a laptop. Like, 15-inch Full HD uh, laptop panel uh, is, I think, equal in pixel density to a 4K, thir uh, external 4K 30-inch um, uh, external display. So it's, it's still great. It still offers great pixel density, and uh, while 1440p screen would be a nice improvement over it for a laptop, I'd reserve it for a 17-inch models because in there uh, it's gonna be it would be more useful. Let's yeah, be honest. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, also, it's about it's all about, uh, it seriously depends on uh, what GPU you have. So you have if you have like top-end GPU. And you have any if you play games which are super CPU demanding, like there's no point for going for full HD there because it's going to be uh, CPU limited anyway. So for CPU demanding games uh, and a, with a high-end GPU, uh, I, I'd say 1440p screen is more preferable. I personally play games which are only uh, GPU demanding, like No Man's Sky, Trackmania, all that stuff. All, all the like smaller games, I'd say, from smaller developers, developers, they're better optimized on the CPU. I mean, they're not as demanding on the CPU, uh, which means they're super demanding on the GPU. Which means that uh, even if even if I had like 3080, a desktop 3080 in my laptop, my six, six core uh, i7 uh, 8750H would still be enough <laughs> for like 
300 yeah, FPS no. for those games. Yeah. Um, the, only one, <laughs> the only ones we haven't talked about are uh, Legion. Yes, they offer some great improvements this year. My only concern is, I have two concerns. Um, There's no first, Legion 7, that's my concern. <laughs> ah, yeah, no Legion 7, that's, that's what's weird. Uh, I am... Mm, Legion 7 got a lot of criticism and it cost them, cost them a lot to manufacture. Um, cri main cri criticism of, is, of course, that buggy Corsair software, which drains the battery like three times faster. Which is very sloppy, by the way. Yeah, level. but now they've announced uh, that their own software is called Spectrum, which I'm hoping that will be on the, the the Legion Seven when they finally do that one. Then, so I don't know how, how that Spe Spectrum software would go. And I think another thing they were really pushing was their AI. And oh, which, yeah, uh, you know, interesting. Gigabyte started with the AI thing, uh, and that was I, a, okay. Yeah, uh, but Stephen, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the AI. Improvement only supports like 14 games there. Like, come on, how many games are actually supported there? It's uh, it's, it's so niche right now. They, uh, I believe, they have to optimize every single game separately for that. So, how many games are actually going to? Yeah, I'm not sure. Let's, let's I know that um, less, friend less Baco, than, he uh, he tested it out yeah, on his yeah. uh, Legion 70. He had I, actually, I have not tested it on mine. I prefer just to do things myself, but uh, he said he, he got a, 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 did get an extra frame rate boost on the games he was playing. So we'll have to, I'll have to test that when when I get them in. And see yeah, let's discuss it's... Legion Five a little bit. Uh, five and Five Pro. Uh, like I, like I said in a text comment uh, to your video, um, the nits. Legion Five, yeah, Legion Five Pro is getting a uh, twelve. 1200 yeah 1200 p display which is great this is low resolution which is optimal in my opinion for a 50 for a 16 inch laptop uh but the bad thing about it is is that it's only 300 nits and i really wanted uh, that low resolution screen for better battery life lower price uh for better gaming performance but because of 300 nits that's not going to be as impressive as the high yeah rent. yeah no i agree i just think uh so the 5 Pro, you know, the 500 nit panel. Like, I don't need high resolution, but I'll be forced to, the to get it. I9. Yeah. Also, I do like the white. Although, will we ever see the white model on the 5 I Pro? Never I never had a white laptop before, so I'm not sure how it would actually feel aesthetically. Yeah. Well, Dave 2 d likes know. white laptops, doesn't he? So he must be good. Um, white and teal. He's a fan of teal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. What? What? Also, eighty watt hour battery, right? Which is on the five, uh, the, the five Pro. That's the that's the Intel model. Yeah, I, I, I believe them. the battery is the same, which is which is uh, which is disappointing for me, because I, I wish uh, Lenovo increased the battery size of their in their laptops in their Legions, but they didn't. It's possible to make them bigger a little bit, not by much, but yeah. Yeah, here this is it. See, the, so the. The Legion 5 AMD 60 watt hour battery, but the Intel model 80 watt hour battery. Yeah, oh, I, that's a, that's I, a, I. That's a pro. Yeah. Yeah, mm. on. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, there should be 80 watt hours across the board, I think. Of course, of course. But maybe they did it for another hard drive bay. I, I don't know. I just. We can only guess at this point. Sixty watt hour again. Uh, I don't know. Will, will the sixty watt hour batteries have a two and a half inch bay? I can see the point having a smaller battery if you increase storage like they used to. Yeah, but um, I don't know why the five has a, uh, a sixty watt hour battery. It makes no sense to me. So let's have a look yeah, at some questions. Mm -hmm. oh, Clevo yeah, is uh, king. I agree. Clevo is king. <laughs> yeah, ex except it's not. Sold in every in every country. What I don't like about the all those brands like uh, Clevo, XPG, Electronics, all that, it's not sold in every country, and specifically, it's not sold in Russia. Like uh, while all those other brands, Lenovo, Acer, Asus, HP, uh, it's also a question of warranty, isn't it? Like in India, it's yes, you know you exactly. can get some of these laptops and have no warranty coverage, like a tech support. Um, that's a whole new another minefield, isn't it, tech support? Now, one thing I do about Lenovo, 
is certainly here in the US, they'll send a tech to your house. And that happened to me with my Legion 5 Pro. They came in and replaced the trackpad uh, for no extra cost. Now, in Russia, do you have the same type of service with Lenovo and Alienware do the same? I don't know. I only dealt with uh, Dell service, and it was uh, fantastic, actually. I contacted... Uh, the, the story is, I bought uh, my Dell G3 laptop in China. It was faulty. From the from day one, I noticed it. And once I got to Russia, I found out that uh, Dell allowed me to use their global warranty, which I was impressed with, because that was a, their budget model. <laughs> and uh, and their, uh, only their business models, like... Uh, uh, like XPS, get the global warranty treatment. So mm. I was lucky there. Uh, so I contact, contacted official Dell support via Facebook. They sent me a PDF file with um, with all their service centers in Russia. I, I I brought my laptop to the closest one. They were very professional. Uh, they, um, they replaced the motherboard. And it's been uh, working flawlessly ever since. So, and then later I had a... A fan a fans problem uh, on that laptop, like one of the one of the fans started like uh, making a buzzing noise, and uh, so I brought it there. Uh, had some problems where had some arguments, but uh, later, yeah. eventually, eventually, Dell decided to. I think Dell support it. is pretty decent. Yeah, exactly. We get, mm -hmm. we get some questions here. Which uh, which laptops are we looking for, looking forward to most uh, in twenty twenty two? Um, me for me, I, I like the the, the 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 Zephyrs Duo sixteen, and I like that uh, Flow Z thirteen. They're probably my two contenders. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just I, I'm just reading the question here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was also like Legion. I mean, I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I like taking notes, so the the, the, the Z thirteen looks good to me. And you can, if you, I'm not sure. I think that there was another Legion one which I put on my first presentation. It was a ThinkPad uh, Plus, was it? It was like a, a 21 by 9 screen with an 8-inch screen on next to the keyboard. That's another one I'm looking forward to because uh, you can take notes on that. Uh, I think that's a more useful second screen, in my opinion, than uh, what's on the Duo 16. And you've got nice 21 by 9 aspect ratio, nice big screen. Yep. Uh, the question from uh, Sheikh Zaid. Sorry that uh, we didn't answer it before. The question was, maybe I answered it before, Stephen. I'm just uh, not good at paying attention to stuff sometimes. Uh, is RDX 3070 laptop GPU future-proof? I'd say yes. Uh, I think it's fine for three to five years for AAA pro projects. What do you think, Stephen? Was that the 3070 Ti? No, 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 the normal 3070 laptop. Oh, yeah, like I, I, I'm still... Using my 2080 Max Q, I'm ready. All my videos I'm editing on my 2080 Max Q. It, it, it. it, well, it what about AAA titles? Uh, yeah, no. I, like I said, it still performs like a 3060, not like an 8, a 65 watt mm -hmm. 3060 or anything like that. It's it, it, it's it's up there with like the Gigabyte G5 I I, I tested. You know, it's, yeah, it's, I, I think due to a lot of VRAM, eight gigabytes is uh, enough for now. And uh, obviously DLSS, the tensor tensor cores, tensor cores will help a lot. Uh, its longevity would would be pretty good, three five years, like I said. Uh, I think. It's I fine. think it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's so it's so easy to jump on the bandwagon and lay out loads of cash. Like I bought a laptop this year. <laughs> oh shit! I better yeah. sell it. The problem is laptops, they, uh, they lose their value so quickly. I've lost a fortune. No <laughs> lie, right? When I first started my channel, I bought a lot. I bought all my laptops to get going. I spent the first year, I think I lost like uh, 15 grand. The second year is probably a bit less, 10 grand, something like that. Just by something to sell them. And you take a hit. Yeah, like the premium ones. Yes, I agree. Uh, especially if you buy a new one and you want to sell it immediately, they lose value a lot. But allow me to disagree with there, like overall about laptops. My Dell G3. Uh, can be found on the second hand market right now with the same configuration I have I have here for two thirds the price after three years three years after it was released. Well, so consider right. how much I used it. Well, we're a bit of a price. different situation now with the chip shortage yeah. and uh, how to get hold of things. Uh, you know, yes. when I started my channel five years ago, that wasn't the situation. So I, I've lost my arse a number of times buying stuff. And typically, and also when you're selling it, you know, you sell it on eBay, you, you pay a 15% uh, eBay tax or you sell oh. it privately like I did to some scammer guy I on my channel, 
who tried to is is trying to steal fifteen hundred dollars from me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 he contacted me. He actually wanted the Legion Five Pro, but I sold that to a guy in Jamaica, and then he said, "Oh, what have you got?" I said, "Oh, well, I've got me Dragon Shield," and uh, I sold that. Uh, it sent me emails. We you know we're, we're communicating by email. I said, "Well, pay me by PayPal." He paid me in installments, and as soon as I received the last installment, he sent me an email where to ship it to. I shipped it. Four months later, he's then challenging me, saying he he, he didn't authorize those payments. You know. Uh, so yeah. now I've got to try and fight that to get that money back. So that's probably yeah. that's why I'm not selling any more laptops via my channel. Advice to everyone here who's watching the stream: only sell the expensive stuff locally to a person you actually have, you can see, actually can meet a person can to a person that can actually test your device, test what you're selling. Same with buying online uh, from secondhand, of course, obviously, uh, because selling some Overseas, yeah, but the, the big question is dangerous. payment, right? Payment. Yeah, that, that, he paid by he paid by PayPal, and PayPal's terms and conditions. Now everyone, take note of this because, when you get a payment by PayPal, there's a transaction ID, and in that ID, there's an address where you got to ship it to. Now his address was Senegal in there, but by the email communication, he told me to ship it into the United States, and he confirmed in my email that he received it. But according to PayPal's terms and conditions, I was wrong. And I don't get my money, but I lose fifteen hundred dollars and a laptop because of that. And so, even if you meet somebody, do you pay cash? Is the cash good? Fifteen hundred dollars of cash? I'd feel nervous about that. I mean, it could be. Uh, I but, mean, they just transfer it to your bank. Yeah, account. or by PayPal again. Yeah, yeah, right. They'll say in the PayPal that you've got to ship it to a certain address. No, you get there, no, and then no, you no, got no, to no. check I'm, it. I'm talking about your bank card. Like, you just tell them your bank card number. They transfer money. You just uh, transfer it to your safe deposit. Uh, Even if did it by Zelle, right? I don't know. Would they then challenge that? I, I, it's put me off. I mean, I, I think I'm just going to stick with eBay and pay their eBay tax. I mean, that's a subject for another conversation, yeah. of course. Mm -hmm. um, other questions? I hate Legion. Why do you hate Legion? I like Legion, actually. It's good. Um, Maybe because it's overhyped, like every, everyone's talking about it, even though it still has some problems. Obviously, but it is still, it, it, the fact is it has less problems than most other laptops right nowadays. So, well, like I said, I mean, so uh, by default, you get that uh, in home tech. Uh, it came quick, got the parts quick, you know, gigabyte. Although I've got, I'm running a gigabyte laptop for years, their tech support is supposed to be very, very poor. They can't, you can't get a hold of anybody. Um, Dell was good. I liked uh, Dell, has been very good. MSI, I haven't had any. Major issues there, but they, I've, uh, you know, over over chat and telephone calls, they were pretty decent. Um, but I think the in in house tech support is good because you don't want to send. You always feel nervous, don't you? Sending your laptop away to get fixed when it's got all your stuff on it. Yes, definitely. You know, especially you think, in Shit, Russia, we have got me taxes yeah. on there. Yeah. So getting something to your house to fix it is the way to go. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, if I may, if I may, uh, in Russia we have uh, we have a lot of uh, scammers, like uh, non-official. Of course, of course, I brought my Dell laptop to an official uh, laptop repair center, which is called Fermo. Fermo, uh, not Thermo, but Fermo. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. It's pretty like it's certified everything. But if you bring your laptop to like a really tiny, tiny office where they re repair stuff, there is a high chance they would just uh, scam you. They would just to take something expensive out of your laptop and say, yeah, your laptop is not working, sorry, we cannot fix it. And it's just, and you only find find out about that uh, like months later from an, another service center, like a better service center would, yeah, would yeah. tell you. Well, there's lots sorry. of scammers out there, you know. I yeah. mean, every, I know Andrew Morris, he's been, he got scammed from buying an Xbox, uh, so someone scammed him too, you know, but. So getting back to the CES uh, thing then. Now, one thing I'm looking forward to seeing with electronics and Bob, I mean, Bob's supposed to be coming around to my house at some point, and perhaps he will do and showcase what their new laptops will be for 2022. You mean, you mean Bob of all trades? Bob of all trades, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he works at electronics now, yeah? So Bob of electronics. <laughs> yeah, I've been subscribed to him for like three years now, and he hasn't posted much lately. Like is he well, okay? he's busy at electronics, isn't he? He's, he's um. Oh, he wait. He works. He works at electronics. electronics? Correct. Oh, 
Yeah, he, he, moved, he moved over from Cincinnati, and he's only like 40, 30 minutes drive from my house now. So, Wow, that close. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's why he's supposed to be coming over, and we're supposed to do like a joint stream. And, nice. you know, I think this is a good opportunity where you can talk about the electronics laptops. They do have some new ones on, on there. And he, he's supposed to be at Vegas this week. So I'm not sure whether he, he, he went because he did have, they all got COVID in electronics. I mean, everybody got COVID. <laughs> oh. I know. Anyway. So I think that's we've covered most things there, Sergi. You think? Um, Maybe just a couple of questions. A couple more questions. Question does not really for consumption of generation. Do you think thin and light gaming laptops will utilize full potential Alder Lake H series? Uh, Alder Lake, I think, will scale well with power. So the more the more power, the more performance. Obviously, so uh, they are still going to have great, very good performance. And another question. Why can't we have larger screens on laptops? Who decided 17 inch should be the limit? Uh, that's I think that's that's an object of a li very long discussion. What do you think, Stephen? What uh, 17, 17 inch being the limit? Yeah, the the lap a laptop is meant to be portable, and most people are not willing to carry even larger than. Uh, yeah, well, I, I remember I, I asked Frank Azor when he was at Alienware, "Will you go back to the?" He had an 18 was it 18.3 inch. Uh, Machine and MSI did too, didn't they? An MSI uh, Titan 18.3. I mean, it looked great, but I agree they've got to be fairly, uh, fairly portable. I mean, my I'm running the stream off of a Clevo 17 inch. You know what that's like? It's 11 pounds of weight, about five kilos. It's, uh, <laughs> too, it's a big power brick. Um, yeah, I wish we had a longer stream, but unfortunately. Uh... If I may, uh, Steam is on his lunch break, and it was very kind to have this uh, stream yeah. with we'll me. Go, we'll just answer one quick question. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Salimify is asking about Legion. Does Legion 5 Pro model, will it have this Stingray white foot? Yes, the, the, the Legion 5 Pro has a, has a, has a white model. They, they, it looks really nice. Let me show you um, a picture of it. Ferro Drahone is asking, uh, Legion or Tough, which is better? Legion. Obviously. Legion, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's all metal build. They slimmed it so, down. So many, for, so many more features. So much better cooling. G-Sync, Type-C charging. You name it. It has everything. Legion 5 Pro. Yeah, they call it Glacier White. Let's just switch here to... Yeah, so it, it looks... a. Uh, it's a nice, I think it's a nice looking design. The only the question I've got a problem I've got with these white laptops or like the silver ones, like you said on the G14 was, was the backlighting of the keys. Like here it looks like blue. It's going to be hard to see sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, like uh, the backlighting... The problem with white laptops, or white keyboards, I mean, white keyboards, is uh, is that you can barely see uh, keys during, the, keys, the, yeah, during you know. the daytime during the daytime when the backlight is active. So you need to turn out, turn it off during the daytime. Yeah, no, uh, I agree. And, and I remember the, the, the silver uh, G14 that had white backlighting. And they, again, it was hard to see. It was pretty uneven across the keyboard. Hopefully, they've addressed that. Um, but that was always a bit difficult to see. But anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for jumping in. Um, and thank, thank you very much to Sergi. I know, reminder, everybody check out his, uh, his, oh, it's his, Russian. his, his YouTube it's Russian, cha so. channel. <laughs> We've got it, uh, yeah, thank you again, Stephen, for, uh, for agreeing to have this uh, stream. I really appreciate it. You yeah, no, 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 no. Favorite, favorite your viewers. I hope someday I can learn Russian and then I can understand uh, what you're saying on your channel and we can <laughs> converse. But you're an English teacher, so. Uh... <laughs> oh, dear, eh? All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, everybody. Over and out, and uh, I'll keep you updated on what laptops I've got uh, coming in. Bye.